I'm John Hinton. I'm the Chief Executive of Move On, and we operate Fair Share Glasgow and the West of Scotland, which is one of our social enterprises. It's had an enormous impact on, on everybody, and we're, we're no exceptions. Um, I think that what we've seen is um, some really pressing sort of operational challenges in terms of how do we continue trading, keep our volunteers and our staff safe. Uh, we've seen an explosion in demand. Um, and so I think that the challenge has been how do we meet this massive increased demand? Um, and I think we've had financial challenges as well. I think like, like many social enterprises, you know, we've seen our usual sort of financial model just almost ripped up and thrown in the air and we're just trying to start again and, and, and try to piece it together and, and make things work. Um, but I think it's, you know, I think all those things combined um, have, have been very challenging. I think we're, we're very lucky. We've got a fantastic team. Uh, morale is strong. Um, we've got an amazing team of volunteers who, despite the fact they're not paid, have been coming in day after day, week after week. And it's them that have been the real backbone of our operation and helped us, you know, keep keep the doors open and keep um, the business going and, and keep the, the, the food that we distribute to other charities and social enterprises, keep that food going out in, in ever increasing volumes. And I, and I think one of the, the, the most pleasing things about our response to, to the current crisis is that we've increased our food volumes massively. Um, that's through help from... Fair Share UK, which is the umbrella organisation that we're, which we're part of, and, and to some extent the Scottish Government, and, and to a huge extent the, the food and drink industry in the UK, which has donated masses of, of, of additional food volumes, which we're then circulating and distributing to our charity partners. I mean, it's helped us in a huge number of ways, you know, and I think we've, we've been quite imaginative in that we've gone to some of our suppliers and asked if they can give us better terms. So we've gone to some of our landlords and, and look for rent holidays and rent reductions. Um, we've reached out to the private sector and um, we've had some fantastic offers of help. So VW have donated a refrigerated van uh, for six months, totally free. Uh, we've had offers of transport and drivers from other companies like Peter Vardy. We've had um, offers of support from local logistics companies so recently we were able to um, run food uh, right out to Mull and Campbelltown, which is going to appreciate getting, getting food from Glasgow to those rural areas is really challenging. And we've managed to find new logistics partners who've done it at absolutely no cost. So I think that we, we benefited from quite a lot of sort of in-kind support, which has helped the growth and development of the business crisis um but, but in some ways nothing quite matches hard cash and um so we've um, been we have been approached by some funders who because uh, are aware of the kind of business that we are that we're providing food to other charities who distribute it straight to their, their beneficiaries and service users who are most in need so we've had some people come to us and, and have offered us um, grants for, for the purchase of food so actually, as well as accessing the, the surplus fit for purpose food that is our sort of bread and butter, uh, we've been able to, to implement that with um, purchased food that we, we bought through some local suppliers. Um, we've also looked into and tapped into some of the Scottish Government sort of um, resilience funds and those kind of things and to, you know, varying degrees of success. Um, you know, we, we've been successful with some, uh, unsuccessful with others. Um, we've also looked to Fair Share UK um, for some financial support and they've been very um, supportive and, and very flexible and, and, and we have a very positive relationship with them. Um, and, you know, a fundraiser is, is working, you know, 24-7, just trying to make sure that we get uh, as many um, sort of potential bids out there to, to as many, you know, COVID kind of mitigation funds as we can. But I think we're trying to you know, we're trying to focus our asks, um, trying to um, tell a really clear story in terms of who we are um, and, and, and what we do and, 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 you know, and how um, any financial support for us can make a difference to our beneficiaries. I think the most uh, disappointing um, result we've had is that we had a, an initial refusal from the Coronavirus Business Support Fund. Being a social enterprise and hitting all the criteria, we've a fund that was confident 
that we would be able to benefit from, but we had uh, a, a knockback earlier this week. Um, so we, we're going to, I think we will explore some of the reasons behind that uh, because I think they're possibly mistaken. Um, but, but that's something that we will hope to benefit from in the future. Um, I mean, because the business continues to trade and we continue to have a staff team and a volunteer team in our warehouse premises, and although we've got 13,000 square foot, which is a big, you know, it's a big warehouse, um, keeping on top of social distancing, keeping on top of ensuring that people have got the right PPE, um, keeping on top of messaging to all our charity and social enterprise partners so that they know um, what's expected of them when they're coming in to collect food or when we're distributing food to them, delivering food to them. Um, so I think there's been a, a big shift in our messaging. I think that we've had to change operationally in how we deliver our service to make sure that we've got a safe environment for our um, staff and volunteers. Um, I think we've changed the operational model as well so that we're doing more deliveries to hubs. So rather than us delivering to say 10 individual charity and social enterprise partners, we might deliver to two and then another eight or so partners will go to them and pick up food on a local basis. So we're trying to do more sort of targeted um, local deliveries because we deliver as far south as the Mulligalloway and as far north as Inverary, you know, the more of that kind of hub approach that we can do the better. Um, so that's been a, a that's been a, a direct response to really trying to increase uh, the volumes of food that we're getting out there, um, and uh, at the same time trying not to massively increase our, our transport and, and infrastructure costs. Um, I mean, I think the other reality is that we've had a team, both staff and volunteers, it's been very hard hit um, by by COVID. Um, so we've had people who've become ill with COVID type symptoms. We've had people who are shielding, we've had people who um, are socially isolating. Um, and at one stage of a staff team of six, we were literally down to one sort of able-bodied person uh, in the warehouse. And we had, you know, we're luckily we were able to draft in some other staff from other, other projects that we have. Um, but also, uh, I think as I said earlier, we've got an amazing team of volunteers who've just kept coming day in, day out. Um, and you know, I, th I think that they are absolutely crucial to um, how how we run the business. And I think volunteers have always been important, but in particular at the moment, because we've increased our increased our food volumes so dramatically, um, actually having not just the normal number of volunteers, but actually have, we've had to increase our volunteer capacity, so we have more volunteers coming in. Um, and that, that brings with it, you know, it, it, its own challenges, um, you know, the volunteers, many of our volunteers have got their own individual support needs. Um, and we're doing our best to try and ensure that we're looking after them as, as well as we're looking after our staff team. So I, th I suppose in some ways, COVID has made us more aware of our, our responsibilities, obviously to our customers in terms of the need to get more good quality food out to more people so they can feed more of their service users. But I think it's made us more aware of the, the, the importance that we look after our staff and that we look after our volunteers and ensure that, you know, we're doing everything we can to, to support their health and, and their, their well-being as well. And I think um, I think what we're finding is that it's a particularly challenging time in terms of people's mental health. Um, and, you know, so, so as an organisation that runs a number of other support um, services in, in addition to our social enterprises we're trying to ensure that all our volunteers and staff are getting the best kind of support that, that we can offer I mean I, what I would like to say to our customers is that we are absolutely working our backsides off to get as much food into Glasgow from all our suppliers as possible and, and then to get that food out to our customers so last week we um, distributed the most food we'd ever distributed in one week which was 88 tons and that equates to just over it's it's, it's well over 2,000 meal equivalent so sorry 200,000 not 2,000 so so we are shifting literally food to, to, to the equivalent of hundreds of thousands of meals and that's going straight to our partners across Glasgow and the west of Scotland um, what I would say to, to, our, to our customers is bear with us um, we've massively expanded our food volumes. We are working. We've also we've almost doubled the number of partners we're working with. Um, inevitably, there are some 
packages. Inevitably, there are some operational challenges. You know, we are doing our utmost best to, to, to do to, to fix that, to, to resolve these. Um, we've got a staff team and a volunteer team that are giving 100%, um, are showing a huge commitment. Um, and sometimes, uh, you know, although we do our best, sometimes there are glitches and, and our customers, we just ask them and encourage them to, to bear with us. But I think what they should be confident in is that um, not only are we doing more food than we've ever done in Glasgow and the West of Scotland, but certainly in the preceding three weeks, um, out of the whole fair share network across the entire United Kingdom, uh, we have got more food coming into Glasgow than any other regional centre in the UK. And that's about the hard work of our team, the hard work of our volunteers, our fantastic suppliers, um, and also you know, our partnership with our customers. Um, who are, you know, many of whom have adapted. So many customers who used to, um, we used to deliver to, we've now asked to come and collect, to collect their food. Um, other customers are collecting on behalf of other local bodies, local, local partners. Um, so I think everybody's mucking in. Um, and, and I think we, you know, we appreciate that it's been such a challenging time for our, our customers um, because, most of them have had traditional community food models where they've taken our surplus food and they've used it to cater. So whether that's in a after school club, whether it's a, a, a homeless uh, hostel, a recovery centre, a mental health clubhouse, um, an old people's home, basically what they'll be doing is cooking commu um, communal meals. Obviously with, with the lockdown that's no longer possible. So almost overnight they've had to um, change their model to move towards delivery of food parcels or the preparation of individual meals that then can be delivered hot to, to people's front doors. So, so I think we understand the challenges that our customers have faced and, and, and actually are, are absolutely blown away with how well they responded to these, um, to, to these challenges. And they you know, should be assured that we are doing absolutely everything we can to get the volumes of food they want and to get the kinds of food that they want. I mean, one of the really positive things of that's come out of, of the, the, the current crisis um, is that you know we've developed a number of new relationships so that's new customers but also new suppliers like I mentioned earlier that we've had some new logistics partners come forward but actually we have um, developed relationships with local food producers in Glasgow and, and surrounding areas so companies we've never worked with before who I think once they saw what we were trying to do and the scale of what we we're doing have come forward and have offered us their you know, surplus food or have actually made donations of food. And that's been absolutely amazing. Um, and so if there are any other um, local food producers out there in Glasgow and, and, and uh, you know, nearby areas, uh, please get in touch and we would love to work with you. We would love to help you make sure that any surplus food you have um, is put to the best possible use and goes to feed um, you know, some of the most vulnerable people in, in our community.